welcome. As you no doubt have guessed, I am a Morpheus Codius. Please, come. Ever since Microsoft made the most stupid decision ever and removed the 3D pipe screensaver, I've been having nightmares. We need to do something about it. I will be trying to recreate the Windows XP 3D pipes screensaver. Ah, look at this beauty. I bet almost everyone who has seen this in their childhood is now having a deep sense of nostalgia. I don't know why, but the screensaver always captivated me. I would go into a state of trance looking at the pipes being created, the simulation ending and then starting all over again. So, as a side project, while working on the game engine, I thought it would be a fun task to recreate this myself. Now, just to be clear, I will be making some engine changes necessary to support the simulation, but this video won't be about the engine. I will touch a little on the changes I made, but the main focus will still be the pipe simulation itself. A little trivia before we descend into the Civit pluses. I say a little because there is almost no information about the original screensaver online. I did some digging and I could not really find a single piece of evidence that another source would confirm. Heck, I even asked Microsoft support about it. To no avail, of course. If any of you knows anything about the simulation that comes from at least a somewhat reputable source, I would love to hear about it. So, how does one solve a problem like this? Well, first we need to try and divide it into multiple smaller problems. There are three key things to consider. The geometry used for pipes, storing the information about the current state of the simulation, and the algorithm that runs the simulation. Pretty straightforward. For now, I do not want to go overboard, so let's stick with something basic. Starting with geometry, I decided to use cylinders without caps for the straight segments of the pipe and spheres for the joints. This might not be exactly accurate, but for now our goal is just to make the simulation up and running. I've implemented the cylinder and sphere generation in the engine, and if you are interested in how vertices for spheres and cylinders are commonly generated, I included some info in the comments for you. So, first problem solved. Easy. Now let's think about the simulation state. I've considered two different approaches. One similar to a game of Snake, where we just build stuff at the end of the current pipe, and each segment keeps track of the previous one. But I had a feeling that it might be difficult to implement a fast algorithm this way, since we would likely need to iterate over all of the existing pipes each time we wanted to place a new one, and it would not scale very well. Especially if we wanted to have millions of pipes. So I went with option number two, which is to have a 3D cell grid. We can access the cells using array indexes. To conserve the CPU resources, since only non-empty cells need to be rendered, we also keep a separate array of pipe objects, so we can execute the render method directly on the pipes. This way we don't need to run the render loop on the empty cells. In C++ I first define what a grid cell is. It has information whether it is empty, contains a straight pipe or a corner, and also holds a shared pointer to the actual object being rendered. Currently for the engine itself and also for this simulation I use smart pointers. Smart pointers are just like regular pointers, but we don't need to deallocate the memory when we no longer need them. Some might say but oh it introduces overhead. No, there is no amount of overhead that will be comparable to when I leak every single byte of memory that is available in my system. Period. Now let's look at the other variables. We have the rendering device, a 3D cell grid we talked about, and a separate array of pipes themselves to call render and update functions. It's important to note here that the shared pointer of the pipe in the array is pointing to the same memory location as the pipe in 3D cell grid. We also have the dimensions of the 3D grid, pipe's current position and direction. Some variables regulate the rate at which the pipes are placed and there are some that will be used to make the simulation partly random. The algorithm itself is not very complex but it's not something I could write instantly, so let's start from zero. This is the more fun part of the project. Before we begin with the algorithm, 
I will explain in short how we currently instantiate geometry during runtime. The application has a variable called scene, which is essentially just a list of objects for which we invoke the update and render methods. The same way each object in the scene can have its own list of objects, as our Windows XP pipe simulation does. Basically, we just go over each object one by one and call the update and render methods. This is a very simple architecture, and I can't promise that it will not change in the future. Though it is good for now. Anyway, where were we? Right, the algorithm. Let's start small. We first initialize the grid, set the default direction to up, and write a basic update loop that places a pipe, sets the current position to the next cell in the same direction to prepare placing the next pipe. Cool, so we already made some progress. To avoid going out of bounds or hitting other pipes, we need to force the pipe to turn in a random direction before it does that. For that we need to code two things. First, we need to know all of the directions that are available at any point in time. And second, a randomizer to choose from those directions. To get all the available directions, we just... Well, we just check for all available directions that are either not out of bounds or not already occupied by another pipe. And this is done with some index magic that checks for adjacent pipes and bound limits. For the randomizer, it seems that the norm in C++ is a random number generator called Mersin Twister Generator, so we will use that, I guess. We use it to choose a random direction from the available ones. With these helper functions, we are ready to update the main loop again. Of course, we keep the previous pipe placing logic, but to avoid crashing into something, I have created some new logic to make random turns. So, we get all the available directions and check if the direction the pipe is currently going is available. If not, we choose a new random direction, place a corner and update the current position so we are ready to place the next pipe just like before. Not too complicated, but the result is now very different. I couldn't help but feel excited when I saw this, it actually worked. Despite it not looking anything like the original simulation, we actually are extremely close and just some minor details need to be adjusted. The current core logic for the simulation is that the pipe avoids going out of bounds and never hits any pipes that are already placed. Technically it works, but the life for the screensaver comes from the two things that are still missing. The pipe must make turns at random and the corners and straights of the pipe must connect seamlessly. To randomize the turns, we first need to set the longest and the shortest possible distances for the straights of the pipes. And we also set a variable called turn probability increase ratio that I will explain soon. The initialization ends with calling reset turn probability, which I will also cover in a bit. In the updated loop, we still start by getting all the available directions, but this time we introduce a boolean variable called make corner. Make corner will be used to determine whether to force a corner even if we are not about to hit a pipe or go out of bounds. If the current straight of the pipe is longer than the shortest allowed length, we then call a method called generate direction that takes in all available directions, the current direction and the current turn probability. The generate direction function is just a basic function that generates a random float number between 0 and 1. If the current turn probability is higher than that random number, we choose a random direction from the available ones and return it. Back in the main loop, we check if the current direction does not match with what the randomizer returned. If so, it means we need to make a corner. We immediately change the current direction and reset the turn probability because we're about to make a corner. Otherwise, if the direction matches, we multiply the turn probability by the turn probability increase ratio we set during the initialization so that each time the pipe is more and more likely to make a turn. You might be wondering about the mysterious reset probability function, and I honestly don't know how I even came up with it. Depending on the randomized shortest and longest lengths, it returns a probability between 0 and 1 most of the time. After that, the code is practically the same, with the key difference being to perform a check of a forced corner along with the already existing check for going out of bounds or hitting other pipes. As for the visual problem with pipes not properly connecting, it is pretty simple to resolve, though I want to give you an idea how most of the helper function code looks like, so let's take a quick look. 
The gap between the corners and the cylinders was present simply because the geometry was not touching, so I ended up creating a function called extend cell pipe that takes as parameters the cell we want to modify, the direction we want to extend it to, and the length of the extension. As you can see, the function is just the same code repeated for all directions. Let's take positive x as an example. Before the switch, we set the new length by adding the old length to the past length parameter, and then we increase the scale y by the ratio of the new and old length. This is not enough, however, as we only need to expand the pipe in the direction of the corner so it connects, which means that we also shift it towards the corner. If you are interested in how variables like transform, or for that matter anything in the engine is coded, including this entire simulation we are making, feel free to check out the code in the GitHub repository. In this case, the transform component just has information about the position, rotation and scale, and also has a method to convert this information from local to world space. I do have plans to cover local and world coordinates in more detail in the future. Anyway, ramming the end of the pipe into the sphere solved the visual issue. And now, at long last, the most important part of this video. Will we make Bill Gates proud? Will Microsoft hire me? Only one way to find out. Yes, it is absolutely awesome. I think it immediately catches the attention and makes you follow the path the pipe is taking. I am quite happy with this. So, um, Bill Gates, uh, Microsoft, I've clearly shown that I am capable of replicating the screensaver. So, can you please hire me so that I can put it back where it belongs? For an engine that is only able to create spheres, cylinders and cubes, I still managed to create something decent. I am definitely coming back to this project, but for now we have some major plans with the engine architecture, though I am not sure how... Can you hear that? Your engine sucks.